What's up guys? Uh, today we're going to be working on the engine of the boat and uh, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to change the fuel filters and then I'm going to change the impeller of the water pump. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry if the wind cuts the audio. I ordered a uh, ordered, uh, windshield for it for something like three months ago and I still, still haven't gotten it. But uh, yeah. Um, so f first of all I'm going to start with the impeller and then we're gonna move into the fuel stuff. The engine on the boat is uh, it's a Ford, it's a 2712E, it's a 4.2 4 liter uh, four cylinder diesel, it makes about something like 76 77 horsepower, and it's, uh, it's quite common for the, this kinds of boats here in Finland. The uh, engine, the, uh, the boat is made in 72, but the engine is uh, from the year 75. So the engine is old, but it's, uh, it's, it's very heavy duty stuff and it probably has another 10 or 15 years in it still left. It doesn't have too much hours because it's been always been in a boat so uh, yeah but but let's move on so we're gonna start with the uh, impeller so here is the engine compartment. What we have here is a old red Ford engine, and then it has a PRM two sixty five uh, gear in it, and uh, it's in a quite tight slot because there are the fuel tanks on the sides, and there isn't too much room to work with, but uh, I think we'll probably manage everything. The uh, water pump is somewhere down there. It's in a quite tight spot and I don't know yet how well I'm going to get the uh, camera to shoot, but let's see. Shortly before we start I'm gonna try to explain to you how the cooling system works on a boat and an, on an engine like this. So it consists of two phases. It's the, there's the uh, seawater side or, or or the cooling water that comes from the lake and goes through the uh, through the engine cooling system and the exhaust, and then there's the secondary phase uh, which is uh, uh, the uh, coolant the coolant that r runs through the uh, engine block so there, there's the first part there there's a hole, hole in the hull that takes in the water from the lake or from the sea then it goes through that filter and then the hose comes into the pump that is this one over here and here here we're gonna change the impeller that's the one the one that run, runs the water through the whole system and then the uh, outgoing water from the pump goes through this this is uh, an oil cooler it cools the engine oil and then there's two more heat heat exchangers there's a, there's another oil cooler for the, for the transmission and then there's this heat heat exchanger that uh, cools the coolant that runs through the engine so uh, yeah and then there's the the usual stuff for, for the coolant but uh, the uh, 
uh, cooling is mainly done by the water that comes from the lake that cools down the coolant of the engine and uh, after after the the uh, water from the lake has gone through the heat exchanger it go goes to the uh, exhaust manifold and then it goes to the exhaust well basically it doesn't, doesn't go and go straight to the exhaust manifold but it comes to the start pipe of the exhaust over here and it uh, and because it, it's the exhaust is made of made of rubber the water also cools down the exhaust over there so basically uh this all, all the uh seawater pump side things replace the uh, radiator on a car engine for example because on a boat you you don't have the sufficient airflow for the radiator because the engine is usually on the inside and the boats don't, don't go that fast. And then there's easy source for the uh, cool, wa cool warm water from the lake. So it may make sense that there's no radiator, but it cools down with the water down below. But yeah, let's get going then. Okay, so uh, for, uh, first of all, I'm gonna open up the screws. Uh, I'm sorry that I can't get you a better view, but the uh, camera just doesn't fit anywhere else. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna loosen up all the screws just a little bit. If I can get myself fit over there and uh, I don't want, want the same thing happening to the screws that happened yesterday to my cell phone by the way it didn't survive now I have to go and buy a new one which sucks but what can you do like that and there's the impeller and of course you should you, you should take it out for the winter because after the winter it has to stay in one position and it, and it goes like this which is not good but I al already knew in the fall that I'm gonna change the change it to a new one so uh, maybe it's not that big of a deal yeah so here is the old one and here I have the new one. These sets you usually come with uh, new gaskets and I'm gonna change them also, of course. And it seems like there's a, there's a paper gasket over there so I'm gonna use the same kind of gasket that used to be there and he, here's an angle of the pump uh, the, there was the impeller so the uh, new impeller came with uh, all kinds of new gaskets they use the same impeller into different kinds of pumps so uh, you have to deliver it with uh, all, all the different gaskets also and there's also one o-ring and then there's lube that I'm gonna use when installing this one. Yeah, so uh, I'm not gonna be gentle with it because I have the loop. So uh, just a little bit to the hand 
or maybe all of it and then I'm gonna go through the whole shebang with it it goes in easier when you lube it and then you need to find the right position for the axle and there it is so again I'm gonna run you through the process so here's a fuel tank and there's a fuel tank tank and um, now nowadays you you cannot you do, do this anymore but uh, you you should ha have the fuel outlets on the to top of the tank and not on the bottom but here we have them on the bottom still and the uh, first of all the fuel comes from this hose and it goes into this filter over here and I have the new filter there and from there it goes down 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 there somewhere where whereas the uh, fuel pump is the low pressure pump and there the fuel comes into these two filters over here over there over there and after that after that it goes into the uh, actual diesel pump or injection pump over there and from there it goes into the injectors that are in the engine so uh, I'm gonna start changing the filters from here and move on into those and after I have changed the filters I need to bleed the system because a diesel engine won't work if there is air in the fuel hoses so uh, I need to take all the air out and then then, then it is pretty much done but let's see how it goes So, in an ideal world, this uh, bleeding of the system would have been, been quite easy. You just hand pump it, ha hand pump the fuel into the system, and there's the uh, bleeding screws on top of the uh, top of the filters, and the air, air would just come out. But in this case, because one one of the filters down here is before the hand pump and two of the filters are after the pump uh, it just doesn't suck the fuel like it should so uh, now I need to prime the first filter to get the air out of that and then before that I need uh, I had to go to the local pharmacy and buy one of these uh, injectors and uh, I'm gonna use this to put, get some fuel into the primary filter and maybe put some pressure to the system so that uh, the air, air would come out until the secondary filters. But so, let's try this one.
it's one hour later and uh, I finally think that I got the uh, air bled out of the system. Of course I have still have the high pressure side to work with but I think that um, now I can connect the battery and I'm gonna try to start the engine. So now we are here on the cabin side and uh, batteries are here in the cabinet. So there, there's three batteries over here. These two are 100 amp hours per piece and that's for the fun side of the business and the, that one is a smaller 64 amp hour battery that is dedicated just for the starter. So uh, now while, while we are here I'm gonna uh, uh, put the cables on to all of these but mainly we're just gonna need that one for the starting. So, let's see, there's a light, yeah, batteries are connected. So next thing, well one, so one more thing I need to do before I try to start the engine is that I'm gonna get, get some water because I, I just changed the impeller for the water pump and you cannot run it when it uh, run it dry so then there's the intake hose for the pump I need to put put it in a bucket full of water and so so when I start it's it, it immediately get, get some water in and it starts pumping the water so I only can keep the engine engine on for the time that I have water in the bucket and the pump is quite uh, powerful so it takes something like 15 seconds, 20 seconds before the one 10 liter bucket is empty. But I'm gonna get the water and uh, then we try to start the engine. So now we're ready and if this goes like I think it will, uh, the engine will, engine will turn but it will not fire up because uh, I still need to go through the injectors but uh, still I'm going to try so let's see what happens just a little bit of gas and then start your engines <laughs> It did start. Well, fine for me. I, I still gonna, I'm still gonna use the rest of the water I got. So I'm gonna fill the bucket. It al already did go empty. So I have some spare water that I'm gonna fill the bucket with. I had I 
I had left the bleed screw just a little bit loose, so it might be that I, I will have to do this again in the harbor. But uh, let's do it again. It sounded awesome. <laughs> Yeah. So, seems like the engine is ready for the summer. And so so am I, but the rest of the boat isn't yet. So, we still need need to do some varnish varnishing stuff. Uh but yeah, that's another episode. So, that, that's it the, it pretty much for the engine. Uh well, we did check and change the impeller, even though the impeller was was in good shape. Because uh, you you always need to check it li like this. You have to go go through every wing, and if, if there's any cracks anywhere, it means that you need to change it. But it, the, the, this one had been in the boat for uh, three or four years. And there's nothing wrong with it, but, but just to be safe, uh, I did change it. And the uh, fuel filters, I hadn't hadn't changed them once, and neither had the owner before me. So they, I, I think they were at least uh, something like five, some somewhere from five to ten years old. And uh, even though there were, even though there wasn't any problems with with them, the process of changing them was such a pain that I don't ever want to do it while I'm on on water. So uh, yeah, it, it, I found that found out that you you need some special special to, tools to get it done. So uh, now I know, and now I have the tools to manage it, manage with it. But yeah, that's it for this episode. Hope hope there was something interesting in it. Uh, the, 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 my videos are not instructional videos, but these are just videos showing how I do things. And uh, I think there's a hundred easier ways to do the bleeding of the fuel system in this kind of engine, but uh, that was the way that I ended up with, and finally it seems seems like it worked. So uh, yeah, that's it for today. So and uh, hope you liked it, and uh, like and subscribe if you liked it, and uh, I'll see you next time. So uh, yeah.